Welcome to the Gamers Inn. Come on in, pull up a chair next to the fire. It looks like you've had a long journey. I'm your host, Jocelyn, and joining me as always is my co-host, Ryan. Hello, Ryan. Hello. We're not wearing Gamers Inn t-shirts yet. Not yet, but we will be, because mine's waiting for me at Nertacular. I'm so excited. I hope mine is. I had... I Did you have issues? Crazy, I had no. I had a couple crazy weeks, and and at the last minute, I'm like, oh my god, I forgot to order my Gamers Inn Plus Super Awesome T-shirt. <laughs> I swear this isn't a plug. I literally <laughs> did forget. Um, and I contacted Dave, and he's gonna work his magic. He's gonna try to work his magic. Mm. I mean, he is. He is. I'm not buttering him up either. If you're listening, I I told him if you can make it happen, great. If not, you know what? I uh, it'll be fine. Well. That's the thing, is that we had no idea that the Nertacular pickup code that we've been plugging for the last couple of weeks was a as long as supplies last sort of thing. Like, they knew they had a certain number of t-shirts that they were going to be able to print and get to Nertacular and everything else, so the code was going to be good for as long as it lasted or until the event happened, one or the other, whichever came first sort of thing. So, last weekend, that actually happened and the code ran out, so they've... Uh, kind of fulfilled all the orders that they possibly can way sooner than we thought that they were going to. So that is awesome for us and everyone who's going to be at Nertacular, but it meant that Joel and I were also totally scrambling last weekend and emailing Dave and being like, oh my god, we need like all the Starcross shirts for the Indiegogo, and we need all of the Gamers Inn shirts that Jocelyn wants to order, and you know, like, on and on and on, like this order of like 15 shirts, and I was just like, Dave, do you think you could squeak us in? Uh, so if you're listening, Dave, thank you. <laughs> it, uh, from what I've been able to glean from Twitter and and Dave's crazy madness as he gets closer oh to Nerdtacular and, and, and has to drive to Utah with, with uh, Dunaway, um, it sounds like they're going to have a, a good portion of what they have on Slash Loot available at, at yes, the event. Yes, they will Not be. all of it, yeah. but... Uh, yeah, so I'm I'm, I'm kind of hoping I don't know if the Gamers in T-shirt will be available at that table, but we'll be able to pick up such favorites as, uh, you know, TMS and all that fun stuff. Yeah. So those other shows. <laughs> By the way, if you are looking forward to paying attention to Dave as he and Brian Dunaway drive across the country, it's actually hilarious. You should go to Twitter and follow the hashtag NerdBus, <laughs> because. <laughs> The Nerd Bus runs every year. It takes them about two days to cross the country from uh, South Carolina all the way to Utah, and it's freaking hilarious. So <laughs> you guys should all follow that hashtag, as well as the Nerdtacular hashtag, which is just hashtag Nerdtacular, which we yeah. will be talking about later on in the show. So let's jump in now to what we've been playing. Um, so you have two things, so you get to pick one and go first, and then I will tell my thing, because <laughs> I only have one thing. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, I, I teased this last week, and I promised I'd, I'd jump in. And actually, as soon as I posted the show, I got a tweet saying, have you tried the multiplayer for The Last of Us? <laughs> and I was like, no, I've been editing, but I'm going to play it right now. And I did, and it's fantastic. Really? It's it's so, really good. We were discussing last week um, with the way that the single player works and with it being a survival game, we weren't sure, or I wasn't sure, if mm -hmm. it was a co-op, everyone's trying to help each other survive, or if it's a every man for himself, kill, kill, kill type situation with with AI guys coming at you at the same time. So, so what is the multiplayer all about in Last of Us? So it plays on the human versus human mechanics in the game in the sense that there's no AI, it's all human controlled characters and it is team based. You play on a team of four. Um, when you jump into the multiplayer, it's, it's, it feels like there's not a lot there because there are only two game modes. Um, it feels like there's about four or five maps or at least only one or two that people continually pick. Um, but uh, the two game modes are sort of uh you ha you each have one life and when your team all of your team dies you go to the next round and it's round based mm -hmm. so that one's fun and then the other one is uh lives so you have you start off with four people on each team and you have what's uh, called uh, 20 um uh, shoot what's the word i'm looking for response yeah well reinforcements that that got oh, me that. Okay. thank you so you have 20 reinforcements, and basically what happens is, as you die, it continues to go down, and whoever has zero loses. Oh, um, so it's like, simple. um, um, Altrack Valley in WoW, where you have so many yeah. Re yeah. respawn chances. 
That's a good point. I, I've, yeah. been, I've been playing a lot of PvP, dude. <laughs> a lot of PvP. A lot of PvP. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, well, yeah, I've never been a fan of multiplayer uh, gaming for the most part. I mean, this is sort of on par with the Mass Effect where there is sort of a... Um, it's all co-op. I love I love co-op. I love being on a team. I hate being Me too. free for all. Um, in The Last of Us multiplayer, when you're playing the... I don't know what they're... They all have unique names, but I don't know what they are. But in the one where you have one life and it's round-based, I hate being the last one alive because you're being hunted right. by the opposing team. And it's stressful. And well, it's the same as Mass Effect multiplayer, where when you're the last one, you know all of your teammates are watching you because there's only <laughs> one vision left. Because when you're playing multiplayer and you die, then you get to like follow the camera of the person in this kind of like third person mode almost yeah. and um yeah so you get to follow around the survivor and you know you can flip between people and watch different people while you're waiting for the round to end but <laughs> if you're the last person left alive then you know that everyone is watching you going oh no yeah. no no wait do that no turn that way no don't shoot that guy <laughs> Yeah, and, and it's the same in this where when you, you're all dead and there's one guy left, I, I have had multiple occasions where I'm watching someone slowly, like a predator, just hunt down the opposing team and kill them one by one. And you have a lot of options. I mean, uh, the crafting system is in the multiplayer, fully accessible. Right, I think you were talking about that a... last week where you mm -hmm. that you were really enjoying the, you know, hunting for materials and crafting things in the in-game, so. Yeah, the way that it continues. works yeah, the way it works in multiplayer is um, there's uh, resource spawns, and it's literally just this like metal lunchbox, and you walk up to it, push triangle, and then it opens up, and it'll randomly spawn resources. And depending on whether you're winning or losing, you'll get more. It's like the rubber band in Mario Kart, where if you're in I the last place... I was totally going to say it's like Mario Kart <laughs> with the question marks. <laughs> yeah, it, it's... Blue uh... shell of death. <laughs> But in this case, you get 100 resources, some pistol ammo, and enough to make a, a bomb or something, you know? So that's interesting. And, and, uh, and the really cool part about it is, and I hinted at this last week because a lot of people were talking about it, was the, the metagame. Um, it's sort of like Oregon Trail in the sense that you're, you pick a, f uh, a faction and then you progress through a 12-week story and each day is a new... Uh, uh, game, a new matchmaking game. Um, and each day you want to collect a certain amount of resources. There are these like blue sort of, they look like blue cans of food. And you can get those by either killing enemies or saving up um, parts that you get throughout the game. Uh, and the parts are sort of like the currency for buying upgrades for your weapons and buying armor during the match. And so you have a gamble, like say you've, you've killed enough guys to get your resources for that match and you're going to be able to keep all your survivors alive, you can start spending those parts on armor and weapon upgrades. But like if you're like me and you're doing awful and you're constantly losing, you can use those parts to just, okay, I'm going to save those parts and apply them towards resources at the end of the match so I don't lose any of my uh, clan. And, you know, it's... It's a neat way of making each game, win or lose, fun, you know? Because mm -hmm. it's like, and the matches don't last long. They're like five to six minutes. But it is really like Oregon Trail where like every, every uh, week or so, there's a new event that pops up. And the event that popped up for me was um, your, your clan has, has been infected by dysentery. And... <laughs> You have to invade a uh, neighboring uh, firefly camp for medicine, and basically you spend three days getting. Um, I chose explosion kills, so I well, thought that why was wouldn't kind you? of funny. <laughs> well, it's dysentery, right? Why wouldn't you choose explosions? Um, <laughs> so yeah, I uh, I definitely uh, did that, and 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 you have a, a tiered goal where it's two kills, th four kills, six kills, and depending on where you rank, you. Uh, gain more survivors um, and the metagame just continues from there and you gain levels like you know how you rank up in multiplayer you gain levels in this it's every week you complete you go up a level so it's just different you know they they literally could have done what they did with Tomb Raider and just slapped a multiplayer in there 
and it still would have been better than Tomb Raider, but they went ahead and added... <laughs> I, wait, I thought Tomb, Tomb Raider was good. Oh, Tomb Raider was single crap. player was good. Okay, okay. Oh, yeah. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> Did I miss an episode? <laughs> no, you didn't. Uh, the single player in Tomb Raider is fantastic, as well as The Last of Us, but the multiplayer in Tomb Raider, I couldn't even get through a match. I'm like, okay, <laughs> this is tacked on. Um, but this is, is definitely not. They put a lot of work into it, and... Um, it is tied to an online pass, so for those buying this game used and and enjoy it and don't want to take it back to the store for your 250 spend the money, spend the $10 on the online pass because the multiplayer is worth getting into, and I've, I've, I keep revisiting it. It's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Well, that's yeah. good. So what Can... about WoW? I heard yeah. you played WoW. I, uh... Okay, so... <laughs> The last time we talked about WoW was when we were playing, and that was last... Was that last Friday? It was last week, anyways, at some yeah. point, because... Or that was when we were supposed to play. Sorry, it was Sunday. And so what happened was I wanted to do some questing in Pandaria, run the Jade Temple again, because we got halfway through the first time Ryan, Joel, and I, and a couple of AIE friends tried to run it, so... Uh, we got part way through, this time we went the whole way through, and then what I wanted to do was queue for the boss battle at the end of Midsummer. So, I'm trying, for those of you that don't know, I am trying to very, very, very religiously hard to get the um, Proto Drake reward for the Long Strange Trip achievement which oh. is completing all of the achievements for all of the world events. And so there's about a week-long event for each kind of holiday in real life. So there's, you know, an Easter event called Noble Garden. There's, uh, well, I guess Children's Week isn't really tied to any kind of in, like, real world event. But anyways, um, there's like a Halloween one, a Thanksgiving one, a Christmas one. And they have a summer event that starts on the solstice and goes until July. So that's mm. mine. Last year, you had to be 84 to queue for the boss. So this year, I was like, oh, I'm totally set. It's fine. It's great. You know, I'm just, you know, we'll queue up. We're all over 84. It'll be fine. But the thing is, to queue for a world boss, you have to be max level. So you have to be 89 or 90 to queue for a world boss. And oh. that changed with the world events as well. I was so angry. Like... So angry. <laughs> this happened to me when I started playing Pandaria. I was I was doing the same thing, and I'm like, well, I only have like two or three more holidays, and Beer Fest was one, and mm -hmm. the 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 um, expansion had literally come out, and a month later, that you needed to be 90 to to queue up for the bronze beer guy or yeah, whatever. Yeah, so I'm like, I'm not gonna race to 90 in two weeks. You well, crazy? that's my big problem. Is that Joel and I have been playing together for about a year and a half now and really enjoying it and taking our time and trying mm. to figure out what, you know, we play probably once a week. We do it very, very casually. We've been taking our time trying to figure out the actual story and what is important to know in Outland. Like, I mean, we stayed in Outland a lot longer than we had to and like in terms of our level. We stayed in Northrend a lot longer. We almost missed Cataclysm. Like all we did in Cataclysm was Deep Home. <laughs> because we just way out leveled it and then we're just like well now what do we do well let's just go to pandaria because we're 85 now so now we're in pandaria everyone keeps talking about how amazing it is and it looks fantastic like the graphics in pandaria are leaps and bounds ahead of even cataclysm like the textures are detailed it looks fantastic i love it so i don't want to rush it because my main character right now is 87 and even that is a level and a half because I'm close to 88 so mm -hmm. I'm a l good level and a half ahead of Joel and that was just from doing the world event because I um, flew around and honored all the bonfires and then um, put out extinguished all of the Alliance bonfires and that's what really ticked me off the most is that I spent like two full days doing all of the stuff that you had to do because you literally have to fly all over the entire world, with the exception of Pandaria, they didn't actually put extinguishing the, the Pandarian bonfires into the achievements and into the whole meta achievement. Right. But you do still have to um, go into Ironforge and Exodar 
and uh, Stormwind as a horde and extinguish the Alliance fires, which is a... If you've ever been in Ironforge, that thing is freaking huge, and it's enclosed, like, at least in Stormwind, you can just kind of drop in and you die, but then you can just res at the graveyard and it's not a big deal. But Ironforge, you die and it throws you, like, a five-minute run way outside, and you're just like, oh. <laughs> so, you know, like, I mean, doing the one in the Exodar as well took me a good... Because you can't fly in um, any of the Burning Crusade stuff other than Outland, but the the stuff in Azeroth, like um, the Blood Elf starting area and the uh, Draenei starting area, you can't fly there. So I couldn't even like take a run at it. Like that's what I did when I was going into Ironforge. I took a good run at it, and you know I flew by the guards, and I got a fair distance in before I died and had to do the corpse run. But Exodar, it was just like you go in the door and you die, and then you go another ten feet and then you die, and then you go another ten feet and then you die. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, God damn it. Like, it took so long. It was so frustrating. I was like, it's okay, because at the end of this year, I'm going to have an amazing mount. So... <laughs> Wouldn't it be easier to just buy one of the $25 mounts? I don't even want to calculate how much I have spent of my time <laughs> if you converted that into dollars trying to get this freaking Drake. But I think everybody is... who's listening wants you to convert it into dollars and then watch you weep live on air. Oh my god. Hey, it can be one of our nerdtacular events. <laughs> watch as Jocelyn uses a calculator to calculate. Oh, uh, never mind all I, of the I more do. important life things I could have been doing. So what I decided to do is because Easy. I basically, all of this led to me having two choices. First choice was to level my main, basically blow through Pandaria, do PvP or dungeons or whatever, blow through the Pandarian content as fast as humanly possible before the event ends, queue for the boss, kill the boss, get the achievement, move on. Or, well, mm -hmm. I guess technically three choices. Uh, my second choice was to take my Death Knight, who was at level 60, level her as fast as humanly possible, try to get to 89, queue for the boss, kill the boss, get the achievement, or wait until next year. I really don't want to wait until next year. So that leads me to what I've been doing for the last two days, is trying to level my Death Knight. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to say working. No, no. <laughs> trying to level my Death Knight. So I, uh, I got a guide. I don't care about story or content or anything else. I'm just trying to blow through as fast as possible. And I'm only just at 70. Hmm? Like, yeah. so 10 levels in two days, which... Is still fairly good, you know, once you start getting up to 60, 70, and, you know, it's a good half a million XP per um, level. And, I mean, I'm getting 500 XP because I'm not rested anymore, right? So I'm getting 500 XP per mob sort of thing. So, I mean, I'm still leveling at an all right pace, but, man, oh, man, I'm ticked off. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, like, I don't know what to do now because I'm just about 70, um, I've been queuing for PvP like crazy, and I was doing that wrong too. I wasted a lot of time doing PvP because I was really enjoying it. I, I do really like PvP. It's one of my favorite parts of the game. So I was queuing for that and waiting, and then when I would go in, I was like playing very defensive. You don't get any XP for playing defensive, right? So I was just like standing back and like holding our towers and being all good, and then I was just like... I'm not getting any XP. What is wrong? Everyone talks about how much XP you get for PvP. Yeah. So the next couple of battles, I just ran in like balls out with my Death Knight, like rah, <laughs> smash, 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 and then I got is a lot of XP. Is that what your Death Knight's name is? Balls in? Is that what you said? <laughs> Wouldn't that be awesome? Balls in. The I'm DK. sure. I'm sure that's probably either already taken or banned. <laughs> uh, not if you put a Z in there. Oh, that's true. Then it's not dirty. <laughs> Oh, but it's probably uh, then wait. It's maybe it's dirtier. Or is it Z, Z or Z? I don't, I don't know. know. I, Anyways, I, I watch Sesame Street. <laughs> so I uh, yeah. So I mean, I've been PVPing and trying my hardest, but I don't think that there's any way. I have to work Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Then I have Tuesday off, and then we fly to Nertacular. So <laughs> it's decision making time. And I mean, like, I knew Joel wasn't going to have any time to play, and that's why I couldn't just do it with my main, because if he'd had time to play, we could have played for a couple of days and gone through Pandaria, that would have been fine. But, uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm so frustrated. And I know, like, I'm going to write a whole article about the experience for Doghouse, and, you know, it's, it has been an experience, but I just, I know that the point behind the achievement is to 
kind of be a representation of the fact that you have tried everything in WoW. You know, mm. you, you've you tried PvP, you've explored the world, you've killed the bosses, you know, um, you've done dungeons, which, you know, is part of the killing of the bosses. You know, like, you're not just sitting back leveling, questing, and PvEing all the way to the end. Like, you're really involved in the game and the community and the whole rest of it, right? So I understand that. But what I don't understand is if it's been... If it's a boss at a certain level, keep it at that level. If you're going to bring something, like if you're going to change the level, then just make a new boss. Like, how difficult can that possibly be? Given all the patches that they put out and all the new content they give us, like, if you want to put a new boss in a world event, fine. Put a new boss in a world event. Don't change the stuff that's already there, because if you... The idea is supposed to be if you start in Noble Garden, that's the one you're supposed to be able to complete at any level, including, you know, level 10. Except for, mm -hmm. I still call bullshit on that a little bit because you have to do a lot of traveling that you couldn't do if you were a level 10 character. But, anyways. Um, so, I mean, then it would make sense to if you start at Easter and then you go, that's the, like, starting event. And then you kind of progress up until, like, the Valentine's Day boss. That can be a level 90 boss, because that makes sense. Throwing a level 90 boss two months after the, okay, yeah, you can totally start at zero, and, you know, like, you can do this achievement. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I, I mean, it's weird. They, they, I think they've done this for a lot of the, uh, the world events. Like, there's sort of this locked high-end stuff. And well, yes, I think... but I mean, there's the thing is, it's my biggest problem with WoW is that there mm. isn't a whole lot to do and there isn't a whole lot of content unless you're max level because no one's playing it. So you, it's very hard to find people to quest with, to do dungeons with, to get the whole multiplayer experience if you're not 90 or 85 when it was Cataclysm. And it's like, right. you know, all of these bosses were brought in with expansions, so just keep it at that expansion level. Then there's still something fun to do at the end, and I know that there's, you know, Illidan in the Black Temple and Sunstrider in the Magister's Terrace or whatever that you can do at the end of Burning Crusade. I know that. But there's, you know, all of these world events, they don't have anything. It's either right at the beginning or max level. There's no in-between, and that is so mm -hmm. frustrating, especially going in thinking that you're going to be able to do it at a certain time and then not being able to do it. I think... I, I, I think I, I understand the point you're making, but I know that a lot of MMOs, the biggest cons uh, criticism they face is that there's no end level content. And when they have these world events and continuously say it's just more content for the end game, like that's good for the player base. Because Which... once they hit 90 or max level, they're going to need a ton to do. They're mm -hmm. not just going to want to do dungeons. Whereas if you're leveling from 85 to 90, there's there's that continent there for you, right? right? I understand you're going for the achievement, and I back you up wholeheartedly that, like, I, it, it happened to me too. I was mm -hmm. a little upset that I, I was like, I'm not going to power level five levels through a new expansion. Yeah. I guess I'll wait a year or another, you know? So, well, and see, that's the thing is that I was like, as soon as Noble Garden hit, I was like, okay, this is my starting point. I wasn't 90 because, the again, the Valentine's Day boss, I couldn't queue for because I wasn't max level. So I was like, okay, starting with Noble Garden, I am going to start there and get this achievement and get this mount. And um, I was going to make another point. Oh, the point about the end level stuff. I agree. I think WoW's big problem is that they've grown so big now. They are four expansions in. They are mm -hmm. at level 90. They're not looking... Like, other games with end game content and end game content problems are mm -hmm. at level 50 or 60. It's a whole lot of playtime to go from 1 to 90. That's a mm -hmm. lot of space to not have anything to do except for quest. Like, especially yeah. when there's these... When you know there are things going on, like world events, like patches with crazy content going down in them. You know, like mm -hmm. um, the uh, the Throne of Thunder and, you know, the all the stuff that's going on in Ogrimmar right now. Like... We're totally missing out on all of that and all of that hype and everything else. And there's nothing for us to do. You know, like, I wouldn't feel so bad about missing out on patch 5.4 and all the excitement around that and missing out on talking to people about it if I was queuing for the world boss right now. Because then I'd be like, oh, you guys have your 5.3 or 5.4 content? 
that's really awesome. I'm so excited for you. I have this thing I can do. But I'm just like, oh, yeah, I'm totally running those quests that you guys did, like, a year ago. Well, I mean, the, the expansion comes out, and I think that with WoW, the timeline is that you you start when the expansion comes out then you have a certain amount of time to complete that content then the first major content patch comes out and you start doing that stuff until the, you know and it's mm -hmm. you you have to it it sounds like i mean i'm i'm not playing as much as you are but it sounds like you need to be on is it the cutting edge is that the term i'm looking yeah, for like yeah, yeah you like you got to be right up there with the patches as they come out so basically you got to be like the instance guys right like yeah. they're constantly you know, at that that threshold, they're looking for that yeah. new content. You know, they're not. Um... Whereas I find I'm just totally overwhelmed with all of the old stuff. Like you know, going yeah. through out leveling zones. Like I mean, I did everything in Zangermarsh. Like all of the quests, I got the lore master achievement for Zangermarsh when I was leveling my Death Knight, and it took me. I was level sixty one because that's the level that you have to be to get the first quest in the zone. And it took me from 61 to 64 in one zone in Outland. And I was just like, holy crap, it's supposed to be, I think, 62 to 64. But, like, it leveled me three levels and a bit, because I was, like, 64 and a half when I left Zangermarsh. And I was just like, I totally just skipped... Um, two other zones in Outland because I was, I would leveled them. I was hardly getting any experience. And I was just like, man, oh man, like I like WoW. There's a lot of cool stuff to do. I really like pet battles. I like PVP, but like there's these huge holes in the design and in the leveling. Like I feel like it's really broken and it's quite upsetting for something I love so much to hurt me so bad. <laughs> well, I mean, we, we've had this conversation before. I mean, the reason it feels broken is because you're playing content that was was sped up because it's yeah. it's old content right and and that's something i've stated when they announced that the the pandaria, pandaria was getting nerfed yeah was getting sped up and i'm just like okay well shit it's just going to be another cataclysm mm -hmm. you know i'm not, i'm going to race through it and miss three quarters of the content which to people who have already beat it is like yes i can get my ults through faster but they no one seems to talk to the not just me i'm not being selfish but i'm yeah. sure there are lots of people out there including yourself that are new to WoW and want to experience it at the pace they would have if it was brand new. Yeah. You know, Although, is... that being said, I would not... Pro I probably wouldn't have stuck with it if mm -hmm. it had taken me... Like, if, if right now I was still at level 60 or 70, you know? Like, if I was just coming into Outland now, and given the XP that I've earned on my main character, I think I would probably be somewhere in and around maybe halfway through Northrend, maybe? Um... You know, so if I was still back in Lich King territory, I probably would have given up by now and just been like, you know what, I don't have the time for this. I want to be max level. That's I don't see that happening anytime soon, so I'm just going to, you know, say goodbye and, and give up. So I agree with you about Pandaria. I think it's way too early. They shouldn't have nerfed it that early, but, I mean, what can you do? <laughs> we, again, are behind. Mr. Yeah. I don't sub for a year and then complain that they nerfed it. <laughs> I'm not complaining. Well, a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> I'm just teasing you. I'm the one who didn't play for seven years and then complained that leveling's broken. <laughs> I haven't played. I was thinking about, I don't know what I was listening to or, or doing at the time, but I was thinking back when I was playing WoW, like uh, like people play WoW, you know, like mm -hmm. playing religiously, and thinking about all the games I've been playing lately, like The Last of Us and Tomb Raider and Bioshock and just thinking, like, and Animal Crossing for that matter. Mm -hmm. I, I, the reason I don't play WoW is because I enjoy playing so many games. And it's a problem for me enjoying to play all these games because I will, I will taste them. Like, mm, 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 that's good. Mm, I don't go over here. Oh, <laughs> DS. Blah, 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 you know? I have a problem and I can't have that. Pro I can't focus on WoW right now. But I don't mind, you know, sneaking back into the MMO world and, and, and playing a couple dungeons because the dungeons are the most fun. Yeah. Um, and that's I, one like... thing I wasn't doing is I wasn't queuing for dungeons because I find, like, I mean, it was it was weird enough for me to queue for PvP. Finally, I was just like, this questing is getting boring. I've got to queue for something. And I feel like there's a certain expectation in dungeons that there totally isn't in PvP. Everyone just assumes everyone sucks in PvP. So if mm -hmm. you suck, you know, you're not really letting anybody down. And you lose, and it's over in 10 minutes, right? Mm -hmm. So, 
but in uh, in dungeons, there's this expectation that you've ran the con that you've done the content before. You're familiar with the dungeon. You know what all the boss fights are like. And I haven't. We didn't run a whole lot of dungeons because when Joel and I were leveling, it was just the two of us. So. You know, we didn't have the five people required to run a dungeon. Neither one of us is a healer, so it's not even like he's a tank, I'm a healer, I can just stand there and heal him as he slowly moves through the dungeon, which would be the most boring thing of life, but, you know, like, could probably be done, I guess. So, you, yeah. You need to experience a dungeon uh, as if it's your first time in there. You don't want to be going in and having the, the main... Uh, tank or the leader go, okay, I need you to tank Skull, uh, CC, uh, Orange Condom, and uh, Pink <laughs> Triangle. Just make sure he stays frozen. Mage, if you if he doesn't stay frozen, I will kick you. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Jocelyn, Joel, just do what you do, and we'll go. Yeah. And that's pretty much how I ran Cataclysm. Yeah. Uh, I didn't mind. I mean, it's like, what's this, like, Sandstorm dude doing? I don't care. Let's just get through this. Yeah. So... I don't know. I like the story, and, and so when I was playing with you guys a couple of weeks ago, I was actually enjoying, like, being out, able to actually listen to the voice actor as opposed mm -hmm. to having, you know, Rushy McRusherton go in there and, yep. and take him on. Well, um, and that's what we've enjoyed so much, too, is that, you know, taking our time, getting to know the dungeons, getting to know everything that's going on, and, you know not rushing and enjoying the story and enjoying the experience and not just being like, I want the transmog gear at the end of this fight, you know, like, so yeah, I don't know. It's, I've been, I've been wowing for two solid days. Like I, my pinky finger is like <laughs> broken. Cause I, I have all my, all of my uh, keys are on uh, ASDF and then ZXCV and then I just shift. So I have kind of like 16 things. So it's my pinky constantly going, shift, 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 shift. And I'm just like, oh. I have a couple questions related to your 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 uh, not playing anything else. Um, what was the last game you played that wasn't WoW? Um, this isn't a knock. I played, no, no, no. I played StarCraft. I, uh, Infinite. Uh, okay. No, Red Dead Redemption. I did play Red Dead Redemption in between. But no, you're right. And I feel like my biggest... My biggest problem in variety of games is money, hands down money, which, mm. wow, for even though it's a subscription, it's $15 a month, it's $15 a month for content I can't get through. You know, like yeah. there is so much to do that I have for $15 a month content, something new to do, something to play all the time. And even if I finish the game, finish the game, even if I get mm -hmm. to 90 and run all the patch, you know, 5.1 through 5.4 content, 5.4 is not yet out, but 5.3 content, um, then I still have, you know, like uh, 10 or 11 other races and all these other classes that I can play with. Like, I didn't like my Death Knight at first, but now that I've played with her more and I've unlocked more abilities, it's actually really fun. So, you know, like, there's all these other classes that I want to try and things I want to do. So, I mean, there's always something there for me, and it's $15 a month. I yeah. have my computer, so that's not an expense. I find, mm -hmm. like, I really wanted to play The Last of Us. But if I want to play The Last of Us, I have to go buy a PS3, which is, like, 250 bucks, and then I have to buy the game, and that's another 60 So, you know, like, that's a huge money sink. I really mm -hmm. want to play Animal Crossing and Luigi's Mansion and Mario Kart, but then I have to spend $200 on a 3DS and then $40 on each title. So... Playing lots and lots and lots of games is not something that I that I don't want to do. It's not that I think that WoW is better than all of those games. It's that it is there, it's accessible, I pay my fee every month, and it's fine. You know? So, I totally... I, if people want to start sending me games, I will play them. <laughs> I will throw WoW aside, and I will play them all. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to make a statement or anything. I was just curious. <laughs> I, I find, like, when I'm playing, like, one game a lot or one type of game a lot... I start to get like bored with the mechanics. I've never been able to mm. sort of like play. I got one burnt game. out on StarCraft. I was yeah. really StarCraft heavy for about three months, and I just like I mean, when I wasn't playing it, I was watching tutorials about it, or I was watching pro games, and I just I got so burnt out on StarCraft. Yeah. I, okay. So I, I can see that. And yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, my next question was going to be, are you buying a 3DS for the trip? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. I uh, looked into it, but that's just, it's not financially possible right now, unfortunately. Um, yeah, 
So I was pretty bummed. I I oh. was looking for it everywhere, and there was um, there was a bundle that was available a, like a forty five minute drive from us. It was the blue one with that came preloaded with Mario Kart for oh, two hundred yeah. bucks. And I was like, well, if it's 200 bucks preloaded with a game, that means I'm saving 40 bucks. And then I was like, oh my god, I don't have a car. And even if I did, the gas money, like I just, yeah. I was, I was trying to justify it, and I just couldn't. And it's Your unfortunate. Around the corner, isn't it? My birthday is around the corner, but that would imply that Joel has money. So, <laughs> oh, well, I, there's more people out there. Like you got parents. I'm just, I, I don't know what what rabbit hole I'm going down. Yeah, I, I'm true. just, I'm just curious. I. I, I th you know what I, I think that's great to be able to um, be able to get that out of WoW because you're right you're spending that fifteen dollars and you're never gonna beat it so yeah. it's kind of the perfect game. It is. I mean, you know? you know, when I when I stop and think about it, it's you know the better part of two hundred bucks every year, which it sounds like a lot, but given what I get out of it, I mean, I easily play it. I I like to kind of look at it like. A movie. If I went to a movie at a movie theater, or if we rented them on the Apple TV, then I would get one to two movies a month for the amount that I pay for WoW. So if I can get more than four hours in a month out of it, and if I'm enjoying it as much as I enjoy watching a movie, then I think I'm getting my money's worth. So mm. that's definitely happening for me, at least right now. And as soon as that stops, as soon as I sit down and go, oh, I didn't play WoW for the last two months, or oh, I played but I really wasn't enjoying it, then I'll stop. But until then, you're right. It is kind of the perfect game because it just gives me stuff to do. So, is it's it's so true. Like it, it's it doesn't become a waste of money until you 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 do what I do, where you just you don't play it while it's you know, true. Yeah, active. So, um, and uh, I, I, sorry, I'm just gonna pull this comment out of the chat room. King Argyle mm -hmm. was saying um, that I can rent games, and that's true. Our libraries don't have video games, and we don't have, uh, like, I know Ryan was talking about renting games and stuff and how that was a, a game changer for him um, with the whole Xbox thing, but um, I don't think that there's actually anywhere around us to rent. There's no, it used to be Blockbuster. Blockbuster used to rent video games, but... They, they, don't. Have a, they don't have a red box near uh, no. in Nova Scotia? No. They well, might have one in Nova Scotia, but I guess in yeah. Halifax or whatever. You would think that if they were going to have it anywhere, they'd have it in Halifax. But, um, yeah, in uh, terms of the library and stuff, no. They're, they're doing the book thing. They don't do the video game thing. The library? Man, that'd be the best <laughs> library ever. It totally would. VHS is at the library, and I was stoked. But they just I'm went Googling back to it books. now. <laughs> <laughs> Live, redbox.ca. <laughs> ah, Halifax, Mal Massachusetts does. Halifax, Virginia does. <laughs> Halifax, Nova Scotia, no. <laughs> went to redbox.ca, right? Because there is a, a separate site. Oh. <laughs> I, I know they have like two locations in my city alone, so. Ah, there is one location at Walmart on Chain Lake Drive, but I'm pretty sure that that is very, very, very far from me if it's the Walmart I'm thinking of. And so, yeah, I mean, I probably yeah. could, but it would be cheaper for me to just buy the damn game than the cab I'd have to take to get there. <laughs> Going to the Walmart. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm taking um, a cab to the Walmart. Oh, dear God. <laughs> hey, man, if you, you got to do what you got to do. And... Uh, there's always Steam sales. I hear the I hear the Steam sale is is going to be rumbling through the internet pretty soon. I know. I'm so excited, and I have the app. Yeah. It's all set up on my phone. So even if it happens while we're in Utah, that's going to be okay. But anyways, uh, do you want to talk about new Super Luigi U? <laughs> um. Yeah. Uh, I I I really just wanted to get like just run it by you and see like sort of like here's what Nintendo's doing. It's not going to change your mind, but feel free to make fun of it for five minutes or so. <laughs> Which um, is kind of what I do, fair enough. I, to be honest, I just want to get your opinion, because really what Nintendo's doing with this piece of content is something kind of different from what you see DLC from other companies. Um, so, New Super Mario Bros. U, as you know, is the side-scrolling Mario game on the Wii U. came out as a launch title. And Nintendo had stated at the beginning that they would do some form of DLC, and that DLC is called New Super Luigi U, um, and it features you playing as Luigi, and uh, the character has his sort of flutter jump that he gets in Mario 2, and he jumps higher, and there's a couple other tweaks to the character, so he plays different. But that's not all. You, you also get um, all the levels in the entire game remixed to be more difficult, a uh, hundred second time limit and 
I, actually, just two things. Those two things. <laughs> And uh, it's it's damn hard. And uh, oh, also what they did was um, they they kicked the difficulty up. Where I got game over on the third level, and it's hard. And when you get the when you get game over, it resets your um, progress back to your last hard save. Oh, okay. So pretty hardcore for for Nintendo, and and also for a new Super Mario Brothers game. Those are usually pretty like, you know. Easy. All ages, easy, yeah, yeah. yeah. very this, accessible for all skill levels. Yeah, this is not that. This is not <laughs> accessible, but that makes it more appealing to me, at least, because it's it feels fresh and new. Mm -hmm. And I, as you probably noticed, I haven't said one key thing. And how much does it cost? I was gonna uh, ask that. It was on the tip of my tongue. <laughs> <laughs> I could tell. I can't see what you're doing, but I could tell. Um, it's twenty bucks. Wow. Which is pretty steep. <laughs> That's half the price of a regular 3DS game, is it? Oh, no, wait, we're talking about the, the U. Never mind, sorry. I was U. thinking and 3DS, but still, that's still, that's a third of the price of a regular game. I mean, normally DLC is 10, sometimes 15 if you're really pushing it, but I don't remember the last time I downloaded a $20 DLC that seems steep. Well, I mean, you got to look at it from a value point of view. Like when you look at DLC uh, for this type of game, you might get more levels. Uh, they did this on the 3DS where they had challenge packs where it was like 250 for three levels, you know? Mm -hmm. And they were they were their own sort of mode. This is literally a taking the main game, copying it, remixing some stuff. Uh, and it is, it, it, I, when I say remix and copy and paste and all that, that is a little misleading. It is very much a new game. Um, so it does feel totally new. They basically put a put a new skin and moved stuff around and, and gave you a new experience based on the existing Mario, Super Mario yeah. U or whatever. So well, I can't, bad. yeah, and I can't stress enough that it does feel new. It feels like a different game. Like <laughs> Nintendo could have easily just, and they are doing this. They could have easily just said, "Hey, here's new Super Mario Brothers U two mm -hmm. featuring Luigi." Right. And um, they are going to be releasing it as a standalone disc for thirty dollars. Okay. Um, that does not include the new Super Mario Brothers U. Whereas if you have the disc and buy the DLC, right. So basically, everything. yeah, you get everything. It's like a bundle. Uh, yeah, it's it, and and you know. Uh, New Super Mario Brothers U was very easy. I played it, most of it, with um, uh, Ashley's little sister, like, over the Christmas break. Just sat down right, and I remember, played yeah. through it. You know, very easy. This, I've been playing it for the last couple weeks, and it... Is... And you're on level three? Yeah. I'm, well, I made it into World 2. I've started to get the hang of it, because you're playing as Luigi, and he's very different from Mario. He's very unwieldy. He's kind of moving all over the place, and his jumps are... You know, he is kind of spastic. Yeah, so you got to get used to that. And I just want to say, if you if you did pick up, well, if you have a Wii U, you obviously have New Super Mario Brothers U because what other game would you have bought? <laughs> um, and you're you've beat it, and you're looking for something to tie you over until Pikmin or the Wind Waker HD. This is a very good investment, and uh, you you won't beat it as fast as you did New Super Mario Brothers U. It's it's a it's a lot of fun. It, frustrating as hell, but a lot of fun. <laughs> Well, Ryan and I really appreciate your continued support of our show, along with the support of our sponsor, Doghouse Systems. Use the code TheGamersIn to double your RAM when you purchase a new gaming rank. 4 becomes 8, 8 becomes 16, but 16 does not become 32. That would be crazy. Head on over to DoghouseSystems.com and get your order on, which brings us to Quickfire News. Hey, did we ever mention that you can actually put 32 gigs in a computer? Just not with the code, right? Yeah. Okay. I was just curious if we ever touched on that. Or if anyone has sent us emails. I digress. Uh, Microsoft is no longer charging for XBLA patches. This was confirmed by corporate vice president of Xbox Live, Mark Witten, who followed up with Polygon by tweeting, Microsoft eliminated fees for title updates on Xbox 360 arcade games in April 2013. Just last year, Fez creator Phil Fish trashed Microsoft for their outrageous patch fees, and when this news broke, he was quick to question my right, my, bleh, why Microsoft would hold such awesome news for three months. Seems Microsoft's war on messaging is still proving to be a struggle. 
The Ouya sells out. The Ouya has hit stores and immediately sold out in North America. Some of those that backed the Kickstarter were disappointed at the news because a number of backers have still not received their consoles. Ouya is blaming one of their Chinese manufacturers along with the distributor DHL for the delays, saying they are pissed off. I don't really care how pissed off you are, Ouya. Selling people's consoles to big corporations without sending consoles to all of those who backed you in the first place? Not cool. Mm. EA makes promise to polish turd. Uh, Electronic Arts aims to return Origin, the company's digital marketplace and social platform, back to our roots as a service for gamers. EA executive Bright M- Vice President Andrew Wilson stated, All kidding aside, I'm all for EA making Origin a better product. If they're going to force us to use Origin for EA games, it should be the best product it can be. Or put the games on Steam. <laughs> Blizzard's auction house woes. And this time we're not talking about Diablo. Last week, Blizzard was forced to shut down the mobile auction house for WoW due to a security flaw between the mobile app and their servers. The glitch allowed users to bypass the mobile authenticator app and gain access to accounts with only a username and password. The auction house has since been fixed, but not not before a lot of people lost a lot of gold. Eesh. Yeesh, indeed. Well, I see everyone was all pissed off and worried and, you know, there's this big hoopla about the auction house and how everyone was going to lose all their gold and I went and looked at my character and I was like, oh, I've got like tens of gold. <laughs> Not like everyone's like, oh, I'm going to lose thousands of gold. I'm like, I'm going to lose tens at most. <laughs> oh, wait, you mean people lost... Not lost gold to the hack, but lost gold because they couldn't access the mobile auction house? A combination. A lot of oh. people lost gold to the hack because what people were doing was logging in and then from like their own, like if I am the hacker, from my hacker account, I'm posting things on the auction house, like say some like mat, like a, a the piece of iron ore or something for like mm-hmm. 10,000 gold, something no one would ever, ever pay in a million years. Then they were going into the hacked account the one they stole from other people, and buying those outrageous auction items. So, in effect, transferring the gold through the auction house to their own account. So, huge amounts of gold. I see. Basically as much as they possibly could take. So, I was kind of like, oh, well, that's really smart. (laughs) I was going to say, those hackers, they are... (laughs) They're a smart bunch. Not to encourage them. with them. (laughs) It just, they're always finding ways. Yeah, so as we mentioned off the top of the show, uh, we do have Gamers in T-shirts on Slash Looped, along with many other fantastic shows like The Morning Stream and another A-Move show, The Starcast. So the N13 pick code is no longer good because, like I said earlier, they've already sold out of all of the shirts that they are able to bring with them to the event, but the N13 deal code for $2 off is still good. So head on over to SlashLoot.com and pick up a shirt. Mm. Which brings us to our topic of the week, which is Nerdtacular. We are so pumped because, guys, we are going to do some kind of live Jocelyn and Ryan meet each other for the first time Gamers In special episode thing. We're going to be able to high five whenever like we, t- we talk about it. And I'll be able to see Jocelyn face palm whenever I bring up Nintendo. It'll be great. I know. It's going to be so much fun. And I'll just see fun. the jealousy when I street pass with Cowboy. It'll be <laughs> great. Um, no, I, I was going to say, we Nerdtacular is our topic. We went, we came back from the future, and it was fantastic. <laughs> we won all the things. Everything. Yes. Yep. Um, but yeah, so we are going to be meeting and hopefully talking with uh, Andrew Allen, who is the creator of Free Play, which was the video game uh, sound kind of not soundtrack uh, jazz album yes, compilation jazz, cover. Uh, what do you com- what would you call it? It's a cover album, I'd say, but it is jazz based, and uh, like I said, he sort of puts his own mix. He's actually playing live too. It'll be yes, interesting to see what sort of tracks he plays. Um, it'd be nice to, to kind of, uh, grab as many people as possible. We're trying to, th- we don't know for sure what we're going to do. We might do a mixture of, uh, stick an iPhone in people's face and tell them to talk to us or <laughs> just do a, a show with my laptop and, and microphone. And Yeah, I don't think that we're going to be able to do anything live because Nerdtacular, yeah. for those of you that don't know, is a very, very geeky conference centered around, uh, the Frog Pants Network, which is, um... Created, founded by Scott Johnson and hosts shows like The Instance, The Morning Stream, The Final Score, uh, App Slappy, 
uh, Ladies of Leet, which is one of my favorite shows. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, it's all the fans of the network get together in Utah once a year, and there are trivia contests, and there's a games room, like like board board games, games room. There's just the oh, shit, there's so much stuff. Not to mention there's all the really cool stuff. people. But anyways, it's a hotel. It's in it's everything is in one location this year, which means there are going to be a whole lot of really nerdy people trying to use that hotel internet. I don't think that they are prepared. <laughs> so I don't think that we're going to be able to do anything live. So those of you who are looking for us live on Friday night next week, we probably will not be actually doing anything live because that is the first night of the event. So, but we will right. have some content for you as soon as humanly possible. And also, yes, chat room, the hotel bar is not prepared either. <laughs> yeah, there's going to be... Like, Terpster's already kind of yeah. made his claim over Twitter. Apparently, crunk is a thing. I, <laughs> I looked it up. Actually, someone looked yeah. it up and sent, sent us the link. I can't remember. I think it was War Crusher. Could have been. And, and uh, yeah, I'm prefer, I prefer to choose the definition that is a little more responsible, getting crazy Crazy drunk, drunk yes. As opposed to getting... Um, um, Something about marijuana. We won't go there. Oh. We're not allowed to have fireworks in the valley, so I assume we're not allowed to be lighting things up. In general. So I doubt Scott would approve. <laughs> but th there's going to be a lot of stuff to do there, and um, we are, you're, we're going for a good solid week, are yes. we not? Yes, yeah, we're both like, going to be gone from the 3rd to the 9th. Crazy. You know, I'm going to try to put uh, whatever we do up on the feed, um not when I get back. So I'm getting back to my place on uh, Wednesday. So I'll mm -hmm. but I'll try to get something up when we're in Salt Lake City. Yep. Um but yeah I uh, might even start to use Vine. <laughs> it's been whoa. sitting on my homepage of my phone and it's just been, you know, has that little new bar still across it on the little app icon and I'm just like, Yeah, <laughs> fine. I know you're new. I know I've never opened you. Sorry. <laughs> Well, now you have a choice. You could you, you you can pick your battles. You could go Instagram video if you wanted to and get that whole extra seven seconds. That's true. That is or true. Nine seconds. And then everyone can just comment on everything I post saying, this vine sucks. This vine sucks. I think every vine I've ever watched has that comment as like the first thing. This vine sucks. <laughs> yeah, I haven't done a vine in a while. I have an idea for an Animal Crossing one, but I've been too lazy to do it. <laughs> so... I, I Too lazy that. to do six seconds worth of content. It requires a setup <laughs> and putting shoes on. And just, Next I, thing you're going to tell me is it requires pants, at which point I'm out. No, it doesn't I'm require pants. I'm wearing pants right now. <laughs> I'm wearing shorts. Right I hate now. pants. <laughs> pants are not a good thing in a hot room. And, and I don't suggest wearing pants when you're in, in Snowbird either because I hear it's it's hot. There. It is very hot there, but it's nice hot. It doesn't yep. feel that hot because it's dry. It's a mm. desert, so it's not all humid and yucky. But, uh, yeah, so we're really looking forward to Nerdtacular. Uh, they are actually going to be live streaming the event for those of you that can't attend. You can follow the Nerdtacular ha hashtag on Twitter, which is hashtag Nerdtacular, which is N-E-R-D-T-A-C-U-L-A-R. <laughs> I know it's really long. I was voting for NTX triple I, but that didn't pan out because apparently Roman told. numerals are hard. So <laughs> I saw on Twitter you were you were saying uh, someone um, Scotty D had said uh, the actual had, well the actually actual <laughs> the actual hashtag that's not what Scotty D sounds like. No, we all know that. At all. <laughs> but uh, it was funny. I started reading that. It's like the official hashtag is Nerdtacular, which makes sense. You're it gonna does, if yeah. you're talking about NX whatever you're going to be mentioning nerdtacular so it makes perfect sense but yep. um and i had the misfortune yeah. of explaining nerdtacular to my boss and my <laughs> boss's boss and a bunch of communications staff they were down for a, a meeting at work and these are people who i i'd never see but hear all the time and are above my pay grade <laughs> and i'm here and they're like oh you're going on vacation where are you going like, oh, i'm going, oh, to, I'm going to utah and <laughs> why like, are you going oh. to utah <laughs> What national park are you visiting? Is are you going to Moab? Taking the canyons? Uh, go to where that art guy cut his arm off? It's like no, I'm probably. Uh... What? Just what? That's morbid. 
You've never seen that movie, um, no. 127 Hours? Oh, that one. <laughs> Did you say the Utah? art guy? No, no, the guy who cut his arm off. <laughs> I thought he said the art guy that cut his arm off. I was like, so he was going to do a Van Gogh and just went, you know what, that's been done. Forget ear, I'm going full on arm. <laughs> God. Yeah, phantom pain just thinking about it. Oh, man, sorry. Joke. So guys, continue your story. <laughs> But uh, anyways, uh, I'm like, no, I'm, uh, we're going to spend two days in Salt Lake City. We're going to be uh, at uh, this resort, Snowbird, which is a ski resort, and it's great, and it's all-inclusive. And they're like, oh, that's great. What are you doing there? And it's like, well, I'm going to a geek convention. <laughs> and uh, Ashley at the time was sitting at the table, and, and they all look at her, of course. And, <laughs> she cries, and I'm like, it's just for two days. It's going to be a lot of fun. There's going to be people there. There's going to be board games. Very laid back. It's not going to be like past spectacular events where you're sort of sitting in a it's chair. It's been hectic. Yeah, like the I I watched a bit of the N12 and it was a lot of like okay, let's go away, let's come back, sit in a chair and listen, go away, come back, you know, which is great for us who mm -hmm. love the content. But um, for Ashley, that's a, probably a bit much. But it seems like the schedule this year is a little bit different. It's but, way uh, wide open, and I mean, like, there's times for gaming, there's time like trivia stuff there's presentations there's panels with like all kinds of people from not only the community but um with the shows that scott does he's managed to build up a lot of contacts in the industry so i mean as far as i know there's all kinds of like industry type people that are going to be there either giving presentations or you know like being on panels answering questions like it's going to be so much fun so yeah. much fun so yeah, and just uh, the geek convention thing got them going, and then you mentioned the name, and it's like nerdtacular. I should have just said it was a nerd thing. That nerdtacular probably wouldn't have made as big an impact. <laughs> yeah, for me, I just I don't tell anybody I'm leaving. I just like, <laughs> okay, guys, yeah, I'll see you in a week. Bye. And they just think I didn't pick up any shifts. <laughs> so, because oh. yeah, I, I told one person, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going to Utah for nerdtacular. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. Never mind. You wouldn't understand. <laughs> They they uh, they know who what I am and what I do and and I'm like the internet guy so <laughs> going to an event called Nerdtacular isn't a big stretch right um, and they're excited because I'm excited and I'm gonna bring back lots of photos and mm -hmm. you know I'll just show them the photos of the canyon as opposed to the photos of you know all the nerds <laughs> all the nerds uh, and and I I I'm allowed to say nerd because I'm a nerd I mean it's our word right oh we but, totally like, took it back it's fine yeah and and. The, <laughs> People who are sitting there at the meeting, like, when they say nerd, it feels like they're making fun of me. But when I say nerd, it feels like I'm talking about my group. Your peeps. My people. Your nerd and peeps. It, just have just a lot of fun trying to tell people about Nerdtacular and uh, watching their reactions. Um, but it, it's all in good fun, really. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Like we said, uh, follow the hashtags. Uh, check out nertacular.com for all the event info and the eventual live stream. When Ryan and I run by the camera, we will wave. It will be awesome. We'll and uh, we're really looking forward to coming back in a couple of weeks with all of our fantastic Nertacular tales. So if you'd like to visit us on the web, you can do so at gamersinpodcast.com. You can email us at info at gamersinpodcast.com. You can find us on AMOVE TV, along with other fabulous shows, including StarCast, Campaign Roundtable, Biggest Fan, and This Week in Blizz. You can follow us on Twitter. You can find me, Jocelyn, at GIS Gamer. Ryan is at R. Murphy, and don't forget to follow the show at The Gamers Inn. You can also find us on Facebook and Google+. Before we go, I just want to give a quick shout-out and thank you to my brother Greg for creating our awesome music. You can find him on Twitter, at Sounds Influence. We would also like to thank Joel Duggan of Starcross Online, who drew our Twitter avatars and created our logo, who also recently has started posting comics again. Yay! Madness. Ah, so good. I know, I know. Oh, man, they're so good. You can find him on Twitter at Joel Duggan or read his comic at StarCrossedOnline.com. So thanks for staying with the Gamers Inn. And remember, don't tune in next week. Tune in the week after that. Bye. Bye.